today I've got something a little different prepared. I am at the Battle Creek Regional History Museum, and it is Black History Month, and we're about to ready to see a historic reenactment of Sojourner Truth and Francis Titus. Mm -hmm. And our actors today is Marilyn and Donna. Fabulous. We're looking forward to this wonderful performance. And of course, you guys know Doug, who's the museum director. What do you guys think about today? What are we gonna What are we gonna see today at the presentation? Oh, you're going to see interaction between two very, very strong women who work together in the interests of of suffrage and um, anti-slavery. And you're also going to find out the importance that both women played in American history. Awesome. Well, looking forward to it, Doug. Yes, and it's a, it's a miracle also that we have both of these women serve on our board. And this was more of a reader's theater versus reenactment. Right. Yes. Okay. okay. And it is our pleasure to spread the word of Subject and Truth and Francis Walling Titus. Mm -hmm. So we're going to show you the presentation. This afternoon we will have a Reader's Theater presentation featuring Sojourner Truth and Francis Titus. And with that I will turn it over to Rob. Well, I'm going to introduce my best friend, Sojourner Truth. Donna Rickman. She's been performing as Miss Truth since the mid-90s. Also has written self-written poems and readings on her life. In 2003, the Michigan Arts and Humanities Touring Committee placed her in their directory as a reenactor. She was named a Sojourner Truth Scholar by the Historical Society of Battle Creek. She also co-wrote and co-edited elementary school curricula for grades three through five on the life of Sojourner. Recently, she wrote a book, Dance Daddy, Dance Like Duck. It's designed for children. It's a delightful little book, and it's available on sale, I believe, here. <clears throat> what I bring to this presentation is a lifelong passion for history and involvement in Battle Creek historical groups and a fairly accurate New England accent like that of Francis Titus. Donna, Sojourner. Thank you, Mary. In May 1851, Sojourner Truth attended the Women's Rights Convention in Akron, Ohio, where she gave a simple but powerful speech on women's rights. Twelve years later, Frances Dana Gage, who organized the convention, published an expanded and revised version of the address which has become known as the legendary Ain't I a Woman speech. Today, most scholars think that this simpler, shorter version printed in the anti-slavery bugle immediately after she gave the speech is probably more accurate than the better known version. And there was a young man, an African-American, Marcus Robinson, who attended that speech. And based on what he saw and heard, this is his version. Before I get there, I want to just go on and say that one of the most unique and interesting speeches of the convention was made by Sojourner Truth an emancipated slave. It is impossible to transfer it to paper or convey any adequate idea of the effect it produced upon the audience. Those only can appreciate it who saw her powerful form, her whole-souled, earnest gesture, and listened to her strong and truthful tones. She came forward to the platform and addressing the president, Miss Gage, said with great simplicity, 
may I say a few words? Receiving an affirmative answer, she proceeded. I want to say a few words about this matter. I am a woman's rights. I have as much muscle as any man and can do as much work as any man can. I have plowed and reaped and husked and chopped and mowed and can any man do more than that? I have heard much about the sexes being equal. I can carry as much as any man and eat as much too when I can get it. I am as strong as any man that is now. As for intellect, all I can say is, if a woman have a pint and a man have a quart, why can't she have her little pint full? You need not be afraid to give us our rights for fear we will take too much, for we can't take more than what our pint hold. The poor men, they all seem to be in confusion and don't know what to do. Why, children, if you have a woman's rights, give it to her and you'll feel better. You will have your own rights and there won't be so much trouble. I can't read, but I can't hear. I have heard the Bible and have learned that Eve calls man to sin. Well, if woman upset the world, do give her a chance to set it right side up again. The lady has spoken about Jesus, how he never spun woman from him. And she was right. When Lazarus died, Mary and Martha came to him with faith and love and besought him to raise their brother. And Jesus wept, and Lazarus came forth. And how came Jesus into the world? Through God who created him and the woman who bore him. Then there was your part. But the women are coming up, blessed be God, and a few of the men are coming up with them. But man is in a tight place. The poor slave is on him. Woman is coming on him. He is surely between a hawk and a buzzard. The injustice of slavery. This is the speech that Sojourner gave on her first trip to Michigan. That was 1856, when she came here because of the Friends of Human Progress Committee meeting held October 4th and 5th, 1856. It was soon after this visit to Battle Creek that she returned to Southwest Michigan to live until her death in 1883, the following year in Columbia. This text of her address was published in anti-slavery newspaper, the Anti-Slavery Bureau, October 1856. As you were speaking this morning of little children, I was looking around and thinking it most beautiful. But I have had children, and yet never owned one. No, never owned one. And of such, there's millions. Who goes to teach them? You have teachers for your children. But who will teach the poor slave children? I want to know what has become of the love I ought to have for my own children. I did have love for them. But what has become of it? I cannot tell you. I have had two husbands, but never possessed one of my own. I have had five children and could never take them up and say, my child, my children, unless it was when no one could see me. I believe in Jesus. And I was 40 years a slave. 
but I did not know how dear to me was my posterity. I was so beclouded and crushed, but how good and wise is God, for if the slaves know what their true condition was, it would be more than the mind could bear. While the race is sold up of all their rights, what is there on God's footstool to bring them up? Has not God given to all his creatures the same rights? How could I travel, live, and speak? When I had not got something to bear me up, when I've been robbed of all of my affections for husband and children. Some years ago, there appeared a vision. Then I learned that I was a human being. We had been taught that we were a species of monkey, baboon, or ragged hag, and we believed it, and we'd never seen any of these animals. But I believe in the next world. When we get up yonder, we shall have all that rights stored back to us again. All that love, what I lost, all going to be stored to me again. Oh, how good God is. My mother said that when we were sold, we must ask God to make our masters good. And I asked who he was. She told me he said, up high, high in the sky. When I was sold, I had a severe heart master. And I was tied up and wet till the blood run down my leg. Oh, and I asked God, why don't you come and believe me? If I was you and you were me, I'd do it for you. same mother, and this is certainly true of Sojourner and myself. Our sisterhood was born of hard work and a belief that all people are meant to be free. Sojourner was born into slavery, named Isabel Bonfrey. She adopted the name of Sojourner Truth, and she traveled Sojourner to declare the truth. In her life, she experienced harassment, harsh treatment, and rape. Me, I was born in a Quaker family in Vermont, and I lived most of my life in Cleveland, Ohio. As a Quaker, I was an ardent abolitionist. I had a very, very comfortable life. Isabella loved a man, her husband Robert, for his child, Diana. But the couple was separated by his own, and she never saw him again. She was forced to marry Thomas and had three children by him. One child, Sophia, escaped slavery with her mother and lived to survive her mother. And I was part of her life, too. And as a mother, she was the first successful court challenger of a white man, resulting in the return to her of her son, Peter. And again, comparatively, I had a much easier life raised in my Quaker family. At 28, I married Captain Richard Titus and moved to Battle Creek, where he established a milling business. We had two children. Richard died at three, and Samuel. Samuel lived to take over his father's milling business. By the way, Captain Titus had himself transported self-emancipated slaves from the South. His life was short, but he made an impact, too. We shared the belief in freedom for all people. I met Sojourner in 1856 when she came to Battle Creek to give a talk at our Quaker meeting, but I'd met her before that. She came as a return visit to, as a visit to Battle Creek. I remember introducing myself after the talk, recognizing we were sisters in spirit. That's where our lifelong friendship began. You know, a friendship like ours between a black woman and a white woman was rare. Ours was special in so many ways. 
1867, she purchased a barn about a mile from my house. I lived on Capitol, well, it's Capitol Avenue now, but it was Maple Street then. She renovated that barn into three rooms. <clears throat> At the time of that purchase, I solicited contributions to furnish her with the most basic of comforts, blankets, flannel clothing. Hard times made it necessary for her to remortgage. She paid off that mortgage to me with the proceeds from her narrative. My husband's death in 1868 made it possible for me to become much more active, both at the local and national level, working for universal suffrage. After her traveling companion, grandson Samuel Banks died, she and I traveled throughout the Midwest, often lodging together. That was very rare. She called me the salt of the earth. I work on behalf of the Freedmen's Relief Association, had us on the road a lot. I was her faithful companion. I cared for her in her final illness as a nurse, friend, and sisters by heart. And when she died in my care, I was heartbroken. My tears flowed. I raised funds for her grave monument at Oak Hill Cemetery and for her funeral at the Congregational Presbyterian Church downtown. It was the very least I could do for this strong and brave woman. I continued to issue revisions of the narrative and kept her daughter, Diana, from being sent to the county home. They called them whorehouses in those days. For the rest of my days, I continued to work to advance the cause to which we were both dedicated, suffered, and the battle of freed slaves, including work with Josephine Griffin in the Washington, D.C. Freedmen's Bureau. Let me tell you about this giant of woman. She derived her strength from God. Her purpose was to abolish slavery. Starting in 1844 in Northampton, Massachusetts, where she joined an abolitionist organization. She dedicated the remainder of her life to that cause. She wrote her biography in her famous Anti Woman speech. This was in response to a heckler who accused her of being a man due to her voice and her, her height. Sojourner made many, many friends in the cause. I was not the only one. But I too was dedicated to the cause, suffrage, the abolition of, free, of slavery, and the benefit of freed slaves. I helped with relocation, finding jobs, and educating. And as a matter of fact, I established a school here in Battle Creek. It was an upstairs room at the City Hall, not so far from here. I was her confidant, her secretary, her tour director, financial manager, and continuing editor of her biography. She enriched my life immensely, and I carried on her work for 10 years after her death. So what united us as sisters, a small, humble white woman of New England stock, and a freed slave, a giant in so many ways? It was our dedication to the welfare of all God's children, black and white, female and male, and her faith in God. Thank you for listening to our story. Please keep your Irish alive in your hearts and actions today and in the years to come. Francis died, Titus died at home April 21st, 1994, from Bright's disease. After a one year illness, she died in Washington, D.C. There was a small funeral in her home. And now I'm going to read something that Sojourner wrote on the topic of women's dress. She had a slightly satirical sense of humor and mocked pretension wherever she found it. In this short selection, she ridicules the contemporary state of women's fashion. I'm awfully hard on dress, you know. I mean, you forget that you are the mothers of creation. You forget that your sons were cut off like grass by the war and that the grass was covered by their blood. You rig yourself up in panniers and Grecian van backs and flummeries. Yes, and mothers and gray-haired grandmothers wear high-heeled shoes and humps on their head and put them on their babies and stuff them out so that they peel over where the wind blows. <laughs> oh, mothers, I am ashamed of you. What will such lives as you live do for humanity? When I saw them women on the stage at the Women's Suffrage Convention the other day, I thought, what kind of reformers are you with goose fleas on your head as if you were going to fly? and dressed in such ridiculous fashion, talking about reform and women's rights. Appears to me you better reform yourselves. But Sojourner is an old body who will soon get out of this world into another. 
and wants to say when she gets there, Lord, I've done my duty and have told the whole truth and kept nothing back. Now before Donna and I entertain some questions, I want to mention that we have some representatives from the MERS Truth Explorers group. Um, Shelley Wright, Layla Coleman, and Brittany Wright. Um, Nurse Kate is one of my personal heroes. She never married, and that's not why she's a hero. Um, she <laughs> was one of my heroes because she lived independently. She grabbed, she traveled widely, and she lived to be 99 years old, 99 years old. She lived to be a really old woman, and she left a lot behind her, and I'm very grateful. These ladies will have some material on the uh, lobby that you can um, peruse when we're through. I just want to share the love that I had for Miss Truth. Um, when I came here in 1985, I came with my husband and my children. And there's an organization called the NANDPW, National Association of Negro Business and Professional Women's Club. And I remember that at that time, the president said, well, Donna, do you think you can just get in an old skirt and wear a white blouse and put a scarf on your head and say a few words about Sojourner Truth? And I said, who is Sojourner Truth? Granted, I came from, I'm sorry, but a predominantly white town, Hannibal, Missouri, and it was about Mark Twain, Tom Sawyer, and the adventures of Mark Twain, of uh, uh, Tom Sawyer, and Huckleberry Finn. So, uh, truth was unknown to me after all those years. I, I did not know this woman. And so I gradually started doing some research on this truth. And um, at one point, I remember going to a restaurant and I was just gonna settle down and have something nice to eat and whatnot. And um, I don't know what it was. It was like her spirit overcame me. And it's like she came up behind a chair and I could see her gloves and her fingers in her gloves, caressing the chair, kind of going down. And I more or less told her that it was okay. Things were a little crazy in the restaurant because there was music playing and people were drinking, sadly enough. And that was something that was a total no-no. She told people that whiskey could be hung out to dry because she didn't believe in, in drinking beverages. Um, and, um, what ended up happening was it came to the point where when she was getting ready to depart, she turned around and with her finger, she asked me if I would follow her and tell her truth. And I told her I would. And then I seen her just kind of like all in white running along the window out in the and I immediately went to her gravesite and I caressed her stone. And I wasn't sure that I could take on such a formidable task. I mean, this was a great woman, six feet tall, formidable. Just, you know, she could look at you and cut you with her eyes. And with her voice, she could be witty. But at the same time, she could more or less tell you to sit down and shut up, and you would get the message, believe me. You would hear her words. And how she was able to just stir so many people in her life has been remarkable. And once enslaved woman, unreal. Three court cases she won. I could go on about her history, but um, at this time, I just want to say I feel so honored. And then to have Marilyn here to represent Frances Walling Titus, her comrade. Uh, you never heard much about Frances, but there was so much she did behind the scenes uh, that needs to be brought out. And that's one of the reasons why I'm so glad that Marilyn took on this role as Frances Walling Titus. And I have some education to do to learn what I'm supposed to do as Francis Walling Titus. <laughs> 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 
Uh, just just one little notation. I think I heard Marilyn say three children. Supposedly she had five children, and um, that's not a problem. But um, the thing is, um, to tell her history, some terrible things happened to Sojourner Truth. I mean, there have been incidences and narratives written of her being sexually molested, raped, different things happening to her, and that the five children supposedly that she had with Thomas weren't all of Thomas's children. And so, like I said, I hope that uh, this kind of opens the door and allows you to want to do a little bit more research on this woman who stands 12 feet tall down at the uh, monument across from the First United Methodist Church. If you've not seen that statue, I hope that you go by and see it. And we really thank you for coming, but we wanted to come up and um, answer some questions. Oh, and just to highlight a few these women that are behind us. Um, Mary Butler, through the Historical Society, uh, she developed the archives. I mean, she was a historian beyond historian, emeritus. She was phenomenal. And sadly enough, she did pass um, last year. But anyway, she brought a depth of background education and expertise to that group. And um, she was all about getting it right. And I mean, she would work, work down to the bare bones to make sure she had the historical information right. And she did write a book on the life of Sojourner Truth for middle school students. And it won some wonderful awards. And then we had Frances Thornton, um, who said that she felt that Battle Creek was fuller in history per mile than any other city in Michigan. And she was known for uh, working in a uh, cereal factory and uh, telling the story of cereal premiums uh, for elementary school students. And she wanted to be remembered as one who loved Battle Creek and tried to say and share its rich and vast history. So, and these two women are part of next month's feature, which is significant women in Battle Creek history. There will be a change of uh, the exhibits that we have, and there'll be new stories about other women. So that's going to do it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed the historic presentation uh, here at the Battle Creek Regional History Museum. I think they have plans to do some more of those types of events in the future. If you like today's video, please take a minute to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and I'm going to put some links down at the bottom for the Battle Creek Regional History Museum so you can check them out and find out what they're doing, and maybe you can make a donation. I'll put one of their donation links down there. It's a fabulous mm -hmm. asset to the Battle Creek community, and we certainly want to support them. And another surprise thing I want to tell you is I am now on the board of the Battle Creek Regional History Museum. So you're going to see a lot more of me doing some work collaborating with them on projects like this and today, and so hopefully bring you a lot more history on my channel with the help of these great people. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.